Uh, we're now standing at the bottom of Wenceslas Square, the biggest square in Prague. It's not exactly a square, it's a rectangle. And uh, uh, this I remember from the uh, time when we had to uh, flee from Czechoslovakia. Uh, right on that side over there, uh, we was the Czech, uh, the uh, Dutch consulate, and uh, that's where we uh, waited for our tickets. But before that, when we came from Votice, which is where we were hiding out for six months, um, uh, we went to a hotel uh, before we went to the Czech, con uh, the Dutch consulate, and uh, uh, we stayed there overnight, not far from here. And when we came down in the morning, or started to come down the stairs in the morning, the whole lobby was full of German soldiers. Well, my parents rushed us, that is my brother and me, back up stairs and, and uh, uh, said we have to take our suitcases and uh, we should only speak Czech so that the Germans don't know that we're refugees. And we did that and, and hurried to the Dutch consulate. Well, when we got to the square, it was full of Czech people who were, uh, who were uh, like uh, shoulder to shoulder standing in the square uh, and, and watching the uh, Germans march down through the bottom of the square over there, that street. Uh, they were on, they were, they were soldiers on trucks. They're, the officers had uh, motor car, motorcycles with sidecars. Some of them were marching. It was a terrible, terrible sight. And we stood and at the windows of the um, Dutch uh, uh, consulate, and the Czechs got down on their knees and. And they sang the Czech national anthem. Which was very moving. And we just... My parents explained that, uh, that this is the, probably the end of the Czech Republic as we know it. And uh, uh, and we were just waiting for the tickets to come, which should come any day, so we could leave to go to Holland and to go to America. Well, in the meantime, the people at the consulate explained that we really can't do that now because we only have Czech exit visas, and now that the Germans are here, we need to get. German exit visas. The Czech ones are not good anymore. So my father had to go to the newly established Gestapo headquarters and he left about, uh, I guess about uh, uh, like lunchtime or one o'clock uh, to get to uh, apply for the new vi exit visas. And he just didn't come back. And of course, we were all worried about that. And finally, my mother, uh, in the early evening, around seven o'clock or something, told us children that we should sleep at, in the uh, Dutch consulate. And uh, she would go and see what happened with my father. So the next morning, when we woke up, my, both my parents were there 
And my mother told us that when she got to the, to the Gestapo headquarters, that uh, she insisted on seeing the main official there, the main officer, and uh, and he was uh, very impressed with her because she she was a very cultured person, and uh, and he told her that she that he would let her and the children go but my father had to go to a work camp but that he would be all right there she wouldn't have to worry and my mother who had a lot of courage said that uh, that either that that we're a family and either the whole family goes or the whole family stays and he was so so impressed that he gave her the visas for all of the family. So that's why, why they let my father go. And my father told us that when he got there in the afternoon, they made him and other Jewish people stand in a room with their hands against the wall. And they, they couldn't move, they couldn't even go to the bathroom, they had nothing to eat, and they didn't know what was going to happen to them. So when the officer came and, and released him, he was of course very happy. And thank goodness the next day the tickets came uh, for us uh, from Holland, and uh, and we rushed to the train station. Of course, everybody else wanted to get on the train. It was a mad rush, but fortunately we got on it. And, uh, and it, it was not a pleasant ride because on every uh, train there, was, there were a lot of German soldiers who were examining each person to make sure that they didn't have any jewelry or diamonds or money and that was a very unpleasant experience we had to change trains in we had to go through Germany and we had to change trains in Munich and we uh, the train station had big round tables where people sat and they got a snack to eat when they were waiting for trains. Well, we sat down too and uh, our parents told us that we should now only speak German so that they don't know that, uh, that we're Czechs. So, and they told us to tell, if anybody asks us anything, they should say that we're going to England to get our grandmother to bring her back to Europe to to uh, uh, to uh, Germany or the Czech or Czechoslovakia, and it's a good thing they told us that because sure enough, some German soldiers sat down at the table, and of course they first talked to the children, so they talked to us and asked us where we were going. And we told the story that our parents said that we were going to England to bring our grandmother back. And they said, how wonderful that is, that we are such good people, because now that the Führer, that's Hitler, uh, that now that the Führer is here, everything will be much, much better. And uh, it will be a wonderful, wonderful world. And we're very good for bringing our grandmother back. And then the train came, and before, we were very hungry, but my father said that he's not getting on line to get anything to eat. We'll just have to be hungry. He didn't want to be stopped by anybody and who might ask some questions, uh, because he just wanted to be safe. So we got on the train for Holland, and when we got to the train station in Rotterdam, Holland. There, there were Dutch ladies there with big trays of 
bread with butter and chocolate sprinkles for the children. And we were very hungry. And that's That's the best meal I ever had. That's all.